Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here and welcome to my new Let's Play. Let's play Kirby's Dream Course for the Super NES. A golfing Kirby game, so to speak. Um, I'm going to be covering the one player mode of this game and the one player mode of this game only on my channel. I actually have something planned for the two player mode, but I'm not going to talk about that now. And as for demo play, demo play is essentially a tutorial mode. But the tutorial mode is very slow and very boring, so I'm not going to make you sit through all that. So, let's just get started with the one-player mode. Um, while I'm actually uh, getting my profile set up, I have a few things I need to talk about very briefly. Um, for those of you wondering if my laptop situation has been fixed, I will say right now that it has not been fixed. I'm actually still dealing with that, so to speak. Uh, I know that kind of sucks, but there's not much I can really do about it at this point. I'm kind of stuck until the laptop is actually fixed. The only reason I'm actually recording this is because um, I'm actually recording these videos at home uh, during my Thanksgiving break. So, I mean, my desktop can record videos, but it's in a very weird way, and in a way where I can't use my... Um, audio and video splitters so I can actually watch a TV screen while I'm playing. I'm actually stuck to watching a very, very small preview window with a little bit of gaming lag, so... I mean, it's not the perfect setup, but I guess it'll do for right now. Um, I'll keep you guys updated on my laptop, but until then, I'll only be updating this project, and not on a daily basis. I'll probably upload a video of this every few days. And then uh, Mario Party is actually going to be postponed for a little bit, so I do apologize if you're part of the Mario Party crowd, but there's not much I can really do about it at this point. So, okay, here we go. We've actually completed our icon. I just created my sunglasses from my trademark icon. I could draw Kirby on here, but I didn't feel like it, so we're just going to stick with this for right now. Okay, so as I said earlier, Kirby's Dream Course is a golfing game. Uh, basically, you have to get through each course. Each course has eight holes, and to get through each hole, you have to destroy all the enemies. When you destroy all the enemies except one, the last enemy turns into a hole, and that is how you exit the level. So, that is essentially how you play this game. Uh, you have two kinds of shots. First, you have a ground shot where you just, you know, hit the ball on the ground, kind of like mini golf or putting or something like that. And then you also have a bounce shot, where you can send Kirby up in the air and he can bounce on the ground for a few for a few bounces before he stops. Uh, when you hit the A button in either of these forms, you get a power meter, which basically shows you how hard you're going to hit Kirby. Um, Obviously, the higher the meter is when you press A again, the farther he'll go and the faster he'll go. And likewise, if you barely even let the meter get up at all, you won't go very far at all. And that is basically how that works. Um, you can uh, change the direction of where you're sh shooting by moving the control button or the directional buttons. And you can also hit the L and R buttons to move 45 degrees. So that is how that works. Uh, you can also put a little curve to your shot by holding the B button and moving the arrow buttons around. Uh, the curve shots are a little unpredictable though, and you don't actually go straight at all. You just keep curving until you stop, which is kind of risky to use, and you don't need to use it on this hole anyways. And you won't really have to use it for very many holes at all, so it's not something you'll be using very much, but it can come in handy in uh, certain situations. Um, and for the bounce shot, you don't actually curve, but you can actually change the direction of your bounce. As you can see, I can actually, you know, hit the ball and over here, and after my first bounce, I'll actually just curve to the left very quickly. Or is this the right? No, it's the left. And then likewise, um, you can do the same for the right. And also when you use the bounce shot, you can also adjust the meter um, vertically as well. And you can do a top spin or a back spin type shot. Um, again, these shots I'll probably show as I go throughout the game. I'm not going to explain them too much because I kind of want to just get started at this point. So I'm just going to go back to my normal shot for right now. 
I hope I'm hitting a normal shot. I don't know if I'm at the middle or not. I think I am. Okay, that should be good enough. So for this hole, it's a very simple premise. All I have to do is just um, have the meter go about to the third dot, but not at the third dot. And then press the A button. And that should give you an automatic hole-in-one every single time. If you don't get a hole-in-one, you either hit it a little too hard, or likewise, not enough. And when you get a uh, hole-in-one, you actually get a one-up, and I probably should have talked about that too. But as you can see, in the bottom right-hand corner, we actually have a health meter. Um, each time you hit Kirby, um, you will lose one of your tomatoes, and if you lose all four tomatoes, you actually lose one of your lives. And if you lose all of your lives, you get a game over, and you have to restart the course from the very beginning. Now, um, you can actually regain tomatoes by hurting enemies, so... Um, basically, you won't really come into the situation very much where you'll lose all your tomatoes, like, just, you know, the normal way, unless you get, like, really, really stuck on a hole. Um, other ways you can lose lives and all your tomatoes is by going out of bounds. You can easily do this by using a bounce shot. But there are a few scenarios where using a ground shot could also hit you out of bounds too. Not going to really go into that right now. And yeah, that's really about it for the health, as far as the health goes. And um, as you can see on this hole, we have a new obstacle. We have a arrow um, circle thing. I don't know what you would call these. But basically, whenever you run into the arrow circle, you automatically go in that direction. You're forced in that direction, so to speak. So, if you hit this arrow, you'll go this way. And that's really how those work. Um, I'm actually not going to use the arrow. I'm actually going to do something different. This might seem like a crazy idea, but you can actually get a hole-in-one very easily if you do this. Or maybe not, since I screwed it up, so... Eh, not a hole-in-one, but it's a two, and a two is not too bad, I guess. Still, though, that could have been a hole-in-one, and I'm kind of sad that it wasn't. You can generally get a hole-in-one in every single hole in the game, but you have to be very observant of your surroundings, and I haven't played this game that much to know all the tricks, but I do know a few of them, so... I should be able to get a gold medal on every course, and I'll talk about the medals later on. Okay, so here on this course, we actually have our first power-up. We have the um, high jump power-up. Uh, whenever you see an enemy that's flashing, that usually signifies that that enemy has an ability you can use. And after you hit the enemy, you can use that ability whenever you want. Um, you can even do it like right before you stop. So. Um, try to make use of those abilities when you can, as long as they don't hinder you. Um, the high jump is in a definition of ability that can actually hinder you quite a bit. Uh, whenever you use it, you actually gain an extra bounce. And um, sometimes you can actually go over enemies and sometimes out of bounds. So you want to be very careful of how you use this ability. But I'm going to go ahead and see what I can do on this hole. This hole is... Po it's possible to get a hole in one. But I really don't know the exact trick to it. I don't know all the angles in and out, so I probably won't be able to get a hole in one here, but I should be able to get a two very easily. Okay, yeah, this will definitely be a two. Just make sure I don't bounce over the railing. Okay, that's good. And I should be able to actually just hit the shot right in the hole, or maybe not. Okay, I'll do this. I'll actually add a little bit of a top spin, just a little bit, so I don't go over the hole. Well, I don't know. This is actually going to be kind of tricky. It might be safer if I just, you know, do a ground shot. Yeah, okay, I'll see what I can do on the ground instead. Okay, that works. That works. I almost actually missed the hole right there, too. Not a problem, though. Not a problem. A 2 isn't that bad. I'm actually going to be aiming for a 14 on this course. Um, a 14 can actually be kind of tricky to get, but as long as you play it smart and get a few hole-in-ones, you shouldn't have a problem. Um, before I take my shot, there are a few new obstacles here. First, we have Wispy Woods, a common boss from the Kirby universe. In this game, he's just a motionless tree 
that often tries to block your path. You can destroy him with one of your power-ups, but I'm going to talk about that later when we actually get that power-up. And you can also jump over him too, so that's what I'm going to be doing here to get a hole-in-one, or at least attempting to get a hole-in-one. Uh, you also have a Gordo. Whenever you hit Gordo, you actually um, lose one of your tomatoes. And he can actually knock you off course too, so you want to be careful of him. And you cannot destroy Gordo with anything. He is indestructible, just like he is in the normal Kirby games. Uh, you have a warp pad right here. If you go inside the warp pad, you'll go to the other one, and you'll immediately go in the direction of the red arrow on the warp pad. So we'll be going this way. Um, there are other kinds of warp pads, but I'll talk about those later, obviously. And last, we just have spikes. If you hit spikes, you'll get hurt, and you'll also keep moving, too, until you're off the spikes. So they can help you, but you will not really be using them very much to try to help you. So... Yeah, that's really about it for all the new obstacles on this level, so I'm going to go ahead and hit, take my shot now. This hole's not too hard to get a hole-in-one, but you got to have some very good timing. I think I just got the right amount of timing right there to get a hole-in-one. Indeed I did. And, uh, whoa, that is my phone ringing. Um, hopefully my parents pick that up before too long. Or they could just let it ring, because it might be someone they don't want to talk to. Oh well. Uh, hopefully you can tolerate that for a while. But no, they picked it up. Never mind. Okay. Let's go on the hole 5 now that we came off of a hole in 1. Uh, this is another pretty easy hole to get a hole in 1 on. But once again, you kind of have to use um, very, very precise timing right here. I'm actually going to add a little backspin to my shot just to make sure I don't screw this up too much. Okay, that was actually pretty good. I'll probably roll over the hole though. Oh, no I didn't. Okay, good. Alright, hole in one again. So yeah, my uh, score of 14 might actually be plausible now. Especially if I can keep it up, because the next two holes, they're not too hard to get hole-in-ones on either, so... Here's the hoping I can keep it up. Okay, so we actually have a new ability on this hole. This is the Parasol ability. Uh, like in other Kirby games, when you use the Parasol, you actually float down. And you can probably get an idea of how we're supposed to use the power-up in this hole. Just after we get it, and after we hit the arrow, we'll go down here, and we have to land on the hole, which will become this guy, or this guy will become the hole, rather, so that is what we're supposed to do. Now let's just hope we don't screw it up too much. I'm gonna get full power right here, and that should do it, actually. Or maybe not. No, I got it, I got it. Maybe, maybe, this is gonna be close. All right, home one. All right. That was actually pretty good, I have to say. Didn't take much effort for that one. Okay, so that was an... Uh, we're up to eight now. Um, our score of 14 is definitely plausible at this point. And especially on this hole, because this hole is also pretty easy to get a hole in one on. Gotta make sure you do really good timing, though. And you also need a lot of topspin to make this work. Aw, oh, crap. Okay, well, I'm unfortunately going to be stuck with a 2 on this one, but not much I can really do about that. Let's slow down the uh, topspin a little bit and put a little bit of backspin on it. Not too much, though, because I do not want to go back towards uh, where I am, but enough to, you know, bounce... Slowly to the hole. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, yeah, I put too much backspin on that. So I unfortunately got a three here. So I have to get a three on this next hole if I want to get my goal of 14. Which it is possible. I just uh, got to make sure I play it smart right here. Okay, so I'm actually going to do something a little crazy here. But this is the way I normally get a low score on this hole. Um, 
this is how you want to set up the shot. You kind of want to set it up so you kind of curve to the left a little bit after you take your first bounce. And also you have to make sure that your um, shot is only done at half power. Just like that. And I think I actually did it correctly. Maybe. I'm hoping anyways. Uh, my shot's going to stop right here, but that's not going to be a problem. Okay, right now, I have, to I have to make sure on this shot I that I hit this guy over here. And then I can just make a, you know, a sh soft shot to the hole. And hopefully I don't mess that up. But if I miss this guy, I may not be able to get my score of 14. But we'll see what happens. I could do this correctly. I don't really know. Okay, here's the hoping this works. Yes! Okay, good. Good, good, good. Alright. All I have to do here is just make sure I get in the hole. And I think about a little over halfway through the meter should do it. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. Ah, oh, crap. Dang it. Okay, I misjudged the power I needed right there, so... Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to play this course again to get my score of 14. But I have, I do have a way of handling that, and I'll talk about that after I finish this off. That really does suck, though, because I was really looking forward to doing this in my first try, but... Whatever, this game can actually be pretty tricky, if you couldn't tell. Uh, the mechanics, uh, the mechanics are good, but they're not, like, completely foolproof. So, you will find yourself making very small mistakes like that, and having those mistakes really cost you. So I actually got a silver medal. If you couldn't figure it out, if you wanted a gold medal, you have to get 14. So I was that close to getting a gold medal. I was off by one stroke. And yeah, there are three kinds of medals. A gold medal, a bronze medal, and a silver medal. I have no idea why I went out of order in explaining them. Um, and if you get all of the medals in every course, you actually unlock things. So I'll talk about that later as well. But for now, I have to actually redo that so I can get my gold medals back, or get the gold medal for this course, rather, so... Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to stop this recording right now, and then attached to the end of this video, I'm going to show a few of the holes that I could have got better scores on, but I didn't quite do it. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to basically show you some better ways to do some of the holes that I kind of messed up, so... Uh, that is what I'm going to be doing. Um, until then, though, I'm just going to say goodbye now, and I'll see you guys next time for when I do Course 2, so I'll see you then. Okay, so here's Hole 2. Um, I'm pretty much going to do this in the same way I did the first time, but I don't really know what I did wrong the first time. For some reason, I missed that first enemy when I really shouldn't have, so... I don't really know what was up with that, but I guess it really doesn't matter because I got it this time, so... There we go, there's a hole in one and hole two. It's very important that you get this hole in one just because it's kind of easy to do. And it would actually help you get a good score in the long run. So definitely try to get this one. Like hole two, I probably could have gotten a hole in one on this in my original recording, but I messed one small thing up. Um, one thing I should mention is if you press A as soon as you land from a bounce, you'll actually bounce forward a lot farther. And uh, since I pressed A in my original recording, I actually bounced over the enemy. Uh, that time I didn't, and I was able to hit the enemy, then land in the hole for an easy hole in one. For this one, I just decided to play it safe a little bit. I only needed a four to actually get the gold medal, so I could make a few screw ups, but I didn't want to make too many screw ups, so uh, playing it safe here was probably the best option. Uh, the way I was actually doing it when I originally did the recording, um, the way I was doing it, that was the way you would normally get a hole-in-one, but you couldn't even get the hole-in-one the way I was doing it because I had the parasol ability and not the high jump ability, so it would have been impossible for me regardless, but I was just, you know, thinking about the wrong thing, so I probably should have played that hole a lot safer than I did. 
but it doesn't really matter. Um, since I only needed a four, this was obviously not going to be that much of a challenge. And yeah, this is basically one way you can do this. Um, it is possible to get a two. I got a three just because I barely missed the hole right there. I have to make sure you land on the hill at just the right time and you should be able to get a two. But the way I did it right there is definitely no way to get a hole in one. So if you're going to try to do that, you're probably not going to succeed. Just because you think you need at least the high jump to do something. So that was my second round, or actually to be precise, that was actually my 14th round. It took me 13 tries just to get a gold medal just because I kept making stupid mistakes in the earlier holes. So. Yeah, kind of sucks, but I at least finally got the gold medal, so that's good. Uh, basically, the only thing I did differently here that I did better in the first version was I didn't get a hole-in-one on 4 and 5 like I did in the original, but that didn't really matter since I got a hole-in-one on 2 and 7 regardless. But there we go. Um, there's the gold medal for Course 1, and I'll see you guys next time for Course 2. Later, folks.